All right, I'm showing six o'clock on uh, this Thursday evening. I'm Andy Jenks and I'm with the communications and community engagement team of Henrico County Public Schools. So happy to have you with us for the third of our three HCPS help chats. We had a session at 10 o'clock this morning and a session at two o'clock this afternoon. And we're thrilled to be here with some folks in the evening to help solve some problems and to uh, really get you situated and, and positioned for success on the first day of school, which of course is Tuesday, September 8th. Uh, a couple of notes before we really get underway about what this is and what we're trying to accomplish in doing these help chats. We did, as you probably know, a series of six videos that debuted earlier this week. And I wanna share my screen for just a second so I can show you where to find those videos if you're looking for them. The thing on your screen right now is our main website. It's henricoschools.us slash return to school. It's what we call the mission forward page. And if you're on henricoschools.us slash return to school, you'll see this area over here. here. It's called I'm not able to hear. HCPS Help Chats. And clicking on that takes me to this playlist on YouTube. And you can watch the entire sequence from start to finish if you'd like. And we talk about resources for virtual learning, power school, the iPads, Chromebooks, and laptops, Clever and Schoology, as well as creating your Schoology parent account. We also get into Microsoft Teams, and then new, as of just a short while ago, the full recordings from uh, our roughly 90-minute sessions earlier today at, uh, at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock this afternoon. And the reason I, I bring that up is to, to say that we're not going to go over those videos from start to finish during this session. So we invite you to uh, go back and and look at those videos and, and start and stop and make sure that you're in the best possible position that you need to be in. But this talk, this discussion is really about uh, answering some questions that might not have been addressed in that series of videos. And we're really gearing this toward people who are using PowerSchool, Teams, Schoology, et cetera, for the very first time. So the scope of this discussion is how to get people started with login information, passwords, or a little thing isn't working to get you from, uh, from PowerSchool to Schoology into Microsoft Teams, those kinds of things. And in order to do that, we've assembled a panel of experts from Henrico County Public Schools, and I just want to introduce them real quick so they can say hello. Uh, John Gregori has been with us all day long, and John is with our teaching, learning, and innovation team. John, say hello. Good evening, everyone. This is John. Andy, good to hear from you again and looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, me too. Uh, Margaret Dalton is with our technology team. Margaret, nice to see you for the third time today. Say hello. Hi, guys. How are you doing? That's it. And <laughs> <laughs> well said, <laughs> Margaret. Melanie German is also with our technology team. And Melanie, we saw you at 10 o'clock this morning, and it's great to have you back with us this evening. How are you? I'm doing well, Andy. Thank you. It's good to be back this evening, and I'm looking forward to working with all of the families this evening. Fantastic. So uh, how this has generally worked is that if you have a question, and we assume that if you are with us that you definitely do, uh, indicate that you have a, a question either by raising your hand, but not everyone has that raising hand functionality because the browser capabilities are different from one device to the next. But indicating in the chat will also get the job done in terms of uh, letting us know that you'd like to ask a question. And we have some members of the communications team who are uh, working this meeting kind of behind the scenes and they'll send me a list of names in order and I will call out names and that's your cue to unmute yourself and then ask your question and then we'll just chat you through whatever issue you might be experiencing. But before we begin, it's really important across the board that all of us locate the mute button uh, it's very important that we all locate the mute button so that we can hear our questioners and have a discussion as clearly as possible. That'll really, uh, that's our one big favor to ask. So with that, let's begin. And it's uh, Sierra, I believe. Sierra, if I pronounced your name correctly, you are first up in our six o'clock session. How uh, may we be of service? you can unmute yourself and we'd be happy to talk so when you get your, your um 
your cub kit when, like tomorrow what time is the fifth grade like the fifth grade pickup well uh i'll answer your question with another question sierra uh, what what school are we dis uh, talking about Because the, the times are going to vary from building to building, and even if you don't uh, want to say your school name, that's a that's Colonial a Colonial Trail. Colonial Trail. I would I would recommend contacting Colonial Trail or or checking some email messages if that's an option on your end. Uh, the times of packet pickup and teacher uh, beep and greets or meet and greets um, is a bit outside the scope of our discussion here. So I'm afraid I don't have the information for Colonial Trail, but I would I would definitely suggest reaching out to someone at Colonial Trail, calling the main office or sending an email to a teacher or a principal who I think would be able to get you situated right away. Um, Damon Daniels, Damon, I remember uh, calling your name in the two o'clock session. Uh, are you with us here at six o'clock? Hello. Can you hear me? You're on, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have a question about uh, Microsoft Teams. I am not able to download the app and every time I like, does this I was on the call and like I went through the steps of like signing out for an administrator. Uh, it wouldn't let me remove the account. So I have not been able to start fresh. And my like my every time I, I sign on to my computer, um, Microsoft Teams does have like a installation of kind of thing. Like, Let's uh, let's bring in Margaret. Uh, Margaret, I'm not sure if we were able to hear that entire question from start to finish, but I'll, I'll let you take it over from here. Sure. So, are you talking about a Windows laptop? Uh, uh Dell. Yeah, I think so. Okay, the Dell. It's running Windows 10. It's not a Chromebook. It's a. It's the Dell, actual Dell Windows 10 laptop. Yes. Uh, I think so. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So if you go, if you log into Clever and you've clicked on the Teams icon in HTTPS link, and there's a, that'll open up another window, and there's a link on that page that says download the app. And if that does not work, you need to go to a school and run, and I'll put in the chat and run through the back to school, I call it the back to school, getting your laptop ready for back to school process. And that will um, refresh your group policies and, and a bunch of other things because um, they've been off the network since March and it needs to check right. back in um, to get ready for school. So I will definitely put the Google, it's a Google Doc and I'll put the Google Doc link in the, the chat and, um, and, uh, and then just take that to the closest HTTPS location. It doesn't even have to be your home school. It can be an elementary school. It can be central office, a learning program center, whatever Henrico County school building is closest to your house will work. Does that help? Like, I just went into Clever and I just like found the Microsoft Teams. Yes. But, so I've been on a few like calls today on Microsoft Teams. Sure. And I guess since I've used the um, website so much, it's not like showing me anything that I can um, use for, I guess, uh, to download the app. Gotcha, because you've already initialized and gone in? Yeah, a few times, yeah. Okay, so you're Damien Daniels, right? Damien. The, okay, I'm going to write down your username. Okay. And um, Damien Daniels, and, I'll, and I will have somebody follow up with you. Okay. Awesome. And um, with further directions, but you you should be able to. I will tell you if you do the process uh, at a school as well, that um, the uh, the Teams app is part of that process. Like okay. it, it it'll it'll come in. It should come in as part of that process. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So as just as soon as I get to the school, they'll just like go through the whole thing, and then they'll just download the Microsoft. No, you it's you walk through the process. It's it's a process that you can do. It takes about 30 40 minutes. Okay. I mean, it's it it re, you, you could do it. I have total faith that you could do it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I'll put All it right. in the chat right now. Awesome. Thank you. Damon, thanks very Hi, much. Uh, Elise. Uh, uh, 
I'm going to go to Alicia Robinson next. Uh, Alicia, uh, did I pronounce your name uh, all Alicia. the way correctly? Alicia. Alicia. Okay. Uh, Alicia, welcome in. To, What's your question? I was trying to go to my advisory, but it said I have permission on Schoology. It says you did not have permission? Yeah. Okay. John, this one sounds like it might be up your alley. This is going into Schoology, but maybe not access to an advisory course. Does that sound familiar? So Andy, as we discussed earlier today, we did turn on access for our students to all their courses in Schoology today, and that access will remain for tomorrow as well as the long week so that students and families can jump into Schoology and practice um, navigating and entering and, and exiting courses, but maybe all the links within there may not be active as some teachers don't want to put Teams links if they're not going to be available active. When we're talking about advisory, um, if it's that there is a course titled advisory and you're having issues getting into the course, um, that's something that would be just uh, unusual. And so maybe we can try to work around it. I can provide you with my email address in the chat and we can look at it. It may be that advisory is not a course that's created in Schoology. So I'm not aware specifically of the details for you and your school, but I'm hoping you're able to see majority of your courses in Schoology. And I will say for everyone on the line, this is a time of the year where we still are rebalancing courses and students are being moved around as schedules are getting finalized. We did open up access earlier than than we normally do um, so that we had that opportunity to practice. So uh, keep an eye on Schoology, refresh, and hopefully everything's gonna start looking like it's supposed to each day that we get closer to school. But I'll go ahead and put my email address in the chat. And if you are indeed having issues to clicking on advisory as a class and then getting it to open. I think that's something we're going to want to look into. All right, Alicia. Thanks very much. Uh, Ari, you're up next on the program. Ari, how can we help you? Ari, if you're, uh, if you're hearing us, you can unmute and we'd love to hear what you have to say. Okay. Okay. Can you hear us? Uh, I think so. Yep. Okay, good. Like my question is is trying to find where we do the student home learning code. Uh, where do we put that? Where do we tie it into the Chromebook? So, you know, student home learning code. That's yeah. probably a, a bit of terminology we need to iron out here. Oh. Um, what 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 code well, do you think you're? What code are you well, looking for? Help us teacher, figure that out. Our teacher sent us a code and a, and a scanning barcode is what well, kind of like a barcode thing. And it said uh, today to try to log into Clever, log into Seesaw. I'll have my student or my son do it. And then it also said uh, use the student home learning code that I emailed you the other day. Um, log in as, yeah, you sign in as a student, and it's crucial for the first day of school. That's where it says. But we just can't find where to. We're not sure where that's supposed to go. Okay. Um, let me ask something that I bet you've already tried by now. Is have you been able to contact your teacher and to ask that question directly to the teacher? I, I can email her. Yes. I, I would I would try that because this sounds like something that's unique to our teachers who are all you know coming up with innovative and creative ways to get folks to the places they need to be. But while we're on that note, uh, John, I, I'm thinking of you just for any other ideas on this particular issue as it relates to uh you know a code that gets families into the learning platforms is, are we in agreement that the teacher him or herself is probably the right place to start yeah andy i think that's probably the best advice um in the situation we're in is to reach out to that specific teacher in terms of learning code things that um we deal with it's a possibility that it has something to do with connecting a parent account in Schoology to his child's account, but that is something that is available in PowerSchool and it's not typically shared. So I don't think it's that. Um, it's possible that it could be a course code or a class code for something like BrainPop or one of our other e-learning resources that is a supplement to the basic resources that we use. So let's just quickly cover those. So you have your device 
And then we have uh-huh. Clever, which is sort of that virtual ID badge. We have Schoology, which is our virtual school building and classrooms. And we have Microsoft Teams, which is where we have our face-to-face virtual meetings. So it doesn't sound like it has anything to do with those. Maybe it's one of those additional resources that the teacher is utilizing, um, like a Brain Pop or Smarty Ants to, um, you know, for virtual learning. And it has a particular course code. We also have a product called Nearpod where a teacher would share a code um, and the students would join. So it's very possible it's one of those, but I think the best option is to reach out to the teacher. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I appreciate you guys making time to, to hang out with us this evening. Um, Angie T, Angie T, you're welcome to unmute your microphone, and, and we'd love to hear your question. Hi, I've got a couple questions for you. I have, I'm having problems with my son, um, Chrome. He's in rising fourth grade, and a um, couple questions. Um, so I know I will log him off, right? And then when I log him, um, when we come when we come back on, it seems like I have to keep um, going to the connection, the Wi-Fi connection, and connecting him, and I shouldn't have to do that. And then also, basically, this um, piece keep coming up. It keeps saying that um, the eyeballs cloud number iBossCloud.com 800 is required and then it says the connection is private and then it's asking for um, a username and a password yes and then also oh, okay. then also um, um, when we used to get on it comes up and clever comes on and then it's taking me to Google um, Drive. It comes and taking us to Google Drive, but it's not open up some of his apps. And I and I was looking at your first section at 10, first session at two, and I heard someone else was talking about their some of their apps is not open up. But my first concern is the Wi-Fi keeps knocking us off, and that shouldn't happen. And then um, it's not open open up the um, the apps and then this private thing keeps coming up. And I, and I had um, reached out to the help desk, but um, it takes for them two weeks to reach out to me. And then when they reach out to me, I'll be at work and then they don't call me back. Well, uh, you've got your uh, live virtual help desk right here. That's one of the big reasons why we wanted to do this. And <laughs> I, I think you've described a situation that maybe Margaret can help you through. Margaret, did, does that sound like it's up your alley? Yes. So what you need, what I would recommend at at this point right now. So the I kind of want to go go about it holistically. I really can't speak to being bumped off the wireless piece, um, but is it happening? Is it happening when you are logged in? to the your child's profile um but basically what happened is we'll be because i follow all the steps that andy did the one through six so basically we was fine and now it started doing that it's just all of a sudden it started doing that now when we try to what we do is we get on and he do some work on there and then like the next day we try to get back on it's like when we try it we lock off and then we try to get back on it tell us we're not connected. Okay. And during the summer, it didn't do that at all. Okay. So my recommendation is to, when you sign out of the of the Chromebook, you're gonna see um, your child's uh, username in the middle, and then there's gonna be an arrow next to the um, the name to the right of the name. You're gonna click on that and you're going to click remove user because it sounds like something's gotten kind of hinky and corrupted inside that profile. And then you're going so and you're going to remove the user, the user goes away and you're going to log in fresh with the usernames again and see if it behaves a little bit better going forward. So the 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 pop up that you're getting from iBoss right now we are aware of that and we're working with our vendor to try and alleviate that. Okay. But you just hit cancel, hit cancel, 
Um, on my test, on my test Chromebook, I've seen it. I've been able to recreate it off and on, and it's it is it is inconsistent. So that's what makes it even mad maddening. And so you hit cancel. Sometimes it was three times. Sometimes it's seven times. A lot of times I just close the browser, and then I just open up a fresh window, and then every, you know it just everything settles. Um, so anytime you have an issue on the Chromebook. One of the things my recommendation is you're clearing the cache and cookies. That's the first thing because it's just a giant browser in this box, right? Clear okay. the cache and cookies. And then if okay. you're still having issues, delete the profile um, because you're saving your work to Google Drive or a different cloud. So you shouldn't have anything saved locally. So you should be good. And then when you log in, it's a fresh profile and Things will start coming in again, and and uh, but yeah, that's my recommendation right now. Okay, and then and then I should be able to to um, launch, open up um, Google, Google, and all of those other apps. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, because they'll come in fresh on that profile, and the Teams, okay. the Teams app will load on the taskbar when it's pinned on the taskbar. It's ready to use. Um, yeah, it'll just be a, a fresh a fresh start. Yeah, because right now with the um, Teams, it only let me open it up in Clever. Right, in the browser, sure. Yeah, so yeah. I definitely, definitely, I would just remove the user and log back in um, fresh. Okay. Okay. And then and then that, that eyeballs, won't, eyeballs won't, won't pop up again. Well, I'm not going to say it's not going to pop up again because <laughs> <laughs> we're working on it. I'm saying, I'm saying if it does pop up again, you just hit cancel. Just keep hitting cancel. And I know it's I know it's annoying. I've experienced it myself all week, last week, and I'm we're trying to get to the bottom of it. So I do apologize for that disruption. But okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. And, and tell Andy that one through um six program, that was so awesome of y'all. Hey. That was oh, that was that was awesome. I'm, I'm glad you like that. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that, Angie. I, that, that means a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was, excuse me. Awesome. Hello. Daniel, sorry. He's been waiting in line. Please. I'm going to move on to uh, Riley DeVos. Riley is next on my list. Uh, Riley, I, I see you in one corner of my screen. You're welcome to unmute yourself, and we'd love to hear your question. Um, what time does school start? Because we looked for it, and we couldn't find, like, anything new. Oh, no. okay. Well, I, I think I can answer that one. Um, it it will vary slightly, but generally speaking, and if you give me just a moment, I'm going to pull up uh, the sample schedules that we've made available online. Hello. And I'll be able to show you while we're talking. So hang on. And these, again, are, are sample schedules, so um, something from your school might differ slightly, but I'm going to scroll down here to sample schedules. Now, are we talking about elementary school, middle school, or high school? Oh, no. um, Elko Middle. Elko Middle. So I'm pulling up my middle school sample schedule, and middle schools generally will begin with advisory at 8.30 in the morning. Now, at this point, you should also be able to access your personal schedule through the various tools that we're here to talk about. And for that, maybe I can bring in, um, you see uh, I can bring in Melanie, I think, to talk about PowerSchool, where schedules are available. Melanie, that's right. Are you looking at our school? Or yes, you? you can. Once you create your um, Power school account you can log in and you can see your schedule um, by bell schedule or list view and and that'll give you a, a good gauge of which class is coming first and when they're meeting so generally speaking 8 30 is when middle school will begin but there's so much more information uh, that we that you can find that's specific to you so uh, creating a, a power school account would be a really good step on that uh, toward that destination was that helpful Riley I didn't know if you had any other follow-up question, right? I see that the microphone's still muted. Yes, I, I have a question. I, I do. I'm sorry, Mr. Jinx. No, when you're I, fine. 
when I go into PowerSchool and click on for schedule, it tells me there's no classes. So I, I'm not seeing what you're seeing. Okay. Uh, Melanie, what do you suppose we've got going on in that situation then? That's a very good question. <laughs> You should be, you should see schedules displayed. Is it the, um, are you looking at the very top icon that says grades and attendance or down where it says schedule? At the very bottom, the five, the four icons going across the bottom that says schedule. I click on that and it just says no classes. Well, that is very interesting. Um, let me, let me see a minute. Now, I'm going to have her pull it up on hers. As, yeah, she's coming up with the same thing. We're showing that she has no classes this week. Well, you're not going to have any this week. It well, should I know, show you I'm the saying, schedule not, starting 9-8. I'm not seeing anything. So how do we advance it to a different date? Well, are you in the app or are you in the browser? Uh, I'm on my phone using the app. Okay, I would recommend then that you use the browser. If you log in with the browser, you'll have a much better, more thorough, detailed experience with that. Okay, perfect. We'll try that route then. That might be what the problem is then because we I are trying think to it something. is. Okay, perfect. Right, I don't think anything really shows up in the app until school actually starts. Perfect. Okay, we'll try it on the computer then. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. I'm glad you brought up that question. And I know that does seem counterintuitive where we live in a smartphone and an app world, but what we found is when when there are some options here between power school and schoology that we have the most success and the most comprehensive information on the web browser version though john would tell you if this comes up later in the in our discussion that the app of microsoft teams on the other hand is actually the more desirable okay. desirable version but we'll cross that bridge uh when we come to it uh kennedy davis Kennedy, are awesome. you on the line? And if so, you're welcome to unmute your microphone and we'd love to hear your question. Um, when I click on Schoology, it asks for email. So do I supposed to use the school email or my own email? Ooh, we know that question. All right, who, who wants to be the one to answer that one? I'll take it, Andy. Um, Go ahead. So for Schoology, first of all, great question. And this is something that can feel a little confusing sometimes. So as a student, every Henrico student has a email address, but not every Henrico student has active email. So for our elementary learners, you would have an email address that you use to sign in and authenticate with some of our resources. But again, you do not have an actual active email. So for our students, the email is hcps dash and typically last name, first initial, middle initial, at HenricoStudents.org. Now, in this case, when you're going to sign into Schoology and you haven't gone to Clever, because Clever will automatically sign you into Schoology, so that's one route you can go. But if you're going straight to Schoology and making sure that you're using the Henrico Schoology URL, then you would be um, signing in with the if it asks for the email, you're going to use your username plus at HenricoStudents.org. Hey, John, can you can you repeat that again? Definitely. I hope I'm not um, going in and out of service. I think my son's probably playing some video games and taking some of our <laughs> bandwidth up. But um, we want to, if you're going to enter into the Henrico Schoology URL, make sure it says Henrico and Schoology in the URL, not just a generic Schoology one, then you would be doing HCPS dash and your username. So HCPS dash, your last name, first initial, middle initial is the, is the predominant method that we use. And then you would have at HenricoStudents.org. And again, that email address is used to identify you, but not all students have access to email. So it's the last name, then first name. First initial. For the email. That in that username, uh, are we talking about an elementary student or a secondary student? Secondary student, middle school. Okay. So the the username is consistent throughout. So it would be some the same username they've had in the past. But the typical convention is that it's HCPS dash, mm -hmm. the last name, 
the first initial and the middle initial. That's not a hundred percent true for um, last names that are more common. And so, but that is a good place to start. And um, and then to complete the email, that portion's the username. To complete the email, you just add at HenricoStudents.org. That'll give you the full email address. Some of our applications ask for your email address to identify you, and some of them only ask for the username. So just make sure you look at what it's asking for, and that should get you uh, well on your way. And Andy, if I may interject, if you're yeah, still looking, if you're still looking for your login information, like your email or your password or your username, if you create a parent portal account. All of that information is there for your student on the um, link called student account access within the parent portal. Got it. Kennedy, did we get you uh, down the right path? Yes. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for spending some time with us this evening. I'll uh, move on to Sylvia. Sylvia Thank Long. If you are uh, with us, Sylvia, you can unmute your microphone and we'd love to hear your question. Good evening, Mr. Jinx. I was Hi. asking about the new email that I recently received about the back to school laptop update. It says to take it near the school uh, Wi Fi to download it. What program is that for? Boy, that's Felicia. Uh, I think maybe Margaret can talk about yeah. Wi Fi up, uh, updates pulling on school based Wi Fi. That sounds familiar to you, right, Margaret? So yeah, Ms. L Ms. Long, are you talking about which device are you talking about? Are we? I'm, I'm talking about the. They said that we had to go to John Roth Middle School near the building to upload from their Wi-Fi. There, it mm -hmm. would take about 25 to 30 minutes to download from your car. What so, program is that what, for? Right, so what that's for is that is making sure that the laptops that have been off the network and and actually some of the um, ones that were imaged earlier in the summer um, are have all of the newest policies, group policies applied to the machines. And then there are a couple restarts in there that are going to basically help yeah. put it into a cloud so that we can um, help manage and um, offer a wider range of wider range of services oh. down the road to the laptops. They have to enroll in um, basically Intune and um, and then you know once they're up there there are things like we can keep them patched we can um, we're, we're road mapping planning on um, trying to offer software um, so you don't have to come back to the school every time. Um, okay. There just there are lots of things that we're trying to do, but I call the, out. the steps okay. the steps are going to ensure that yeah. the laptop is compliant. So cool. if you have a sixth grader that just received a machine, okay, you, she is in the eighth grade. Oh, she's in the eighth grade. I'm sorry. So, but still, the part I think is number thirteen. The steps it's number thirteen. If you just go through it, the end. The end step that you are looking for, which is a number 13, is compliant. It's a configuration okay. and it says compliant. Okay. Um, but yeah, you, you definitely want to, um, and it doesn't have to be Rolf. It can be the closest HCPS building. It can be an elementary oh. school. It can be, it can be any high school. Just it has to be an HCPS school property. Okay, what? It, I have a question. Is it possible that I could take it to a hub and let them download it for me instead yeah. of going through doing it in the parking lot? That the hub if I think the Highland Springs High School would be closest to me. The repair hubs, the techs that are working the repair hubs are not are um don't they don't have that information. And so okay. they're they're there, they're they're outside, they were they're outside techs that are doing repairs and oh. swapping out uh, laptops that are having issues. So, um, okay, yeah. I can I can do it the other way. Thank you so much. Sure. sure. It's, it's yeah. kind of like if, if you have a, a cell phone and it needs to do a software update, you can make that update from your house because you're just pulling off any old inter internet signal. 
on, on a network. But with our computers, you can't just pull off any old internet signal. It has to be uh, the Wi-Fi signal from our network, which is located in any one of our, our school buildings. So that's why we indicate one of our buildings, and you can't just do that kind of update from your house, for example. So that's at least one uh, reason that I think Margaret was explaining. Right. Um, Shan, Shan, you're next on my list. Shan, if uh, I pronounce that correctly, you are next up. You can unmute, and we'd love to hear your question. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I just have a recommendation on the format of uh, school uh, emails sent out by the school. So I, I think you have great banner on the top and on the left. Uh, it's looking great, but it kind of uh, squeezed the actual message of the email to the lower right corner of the screen. You know, nowadays our parents are monitoring uh, emails more closely, and most of the time we are checking emails from our phone. So uh, that makes little uh, even little harder to to read on the phone. You know, with I think the, I know what you're uh, talking about. Yeah. Right. Yes. If if if. Some kind of formatting can help us to read the emails, get the key message quick and easy. I think that will be helpful. Uh, just yeah, uh, I think uh, for, for, some, I, I, for the benefits of our parents who are getting older. <laughs> yeah, no, I I, I hear you. Um, I I think um, that that blue gray banner that you're talking about on official school system emails has been there for the entire time that I've been with the school system, and we're talking about eight years now. And I think. One of the reasons it existed in the first place was to give the appearance that it's an official school system email. In other words, if it had that look to it, in other words, not just writing, but if it had that border, then you knew it was an official email. But that was eight plus years ago, right? And uh, smartphones were you know, in existence, of course, but they're certainly way more prolific now than they were uh, just eight, eight to 10 years ago. And you're right, parents are reading a lot of their school communication on their phone. And I've seen examples where that blue gray bar squeezes the text on a screen in such a way that it makes it harder to read. So uh, I know you just kind of said all that and I don't mean to take up time by reiterating it, but uh, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And maybe the time has come to reevaluate that look on HCPS emails. Was there another uh, question that you might've had that for our panel or, or was that pretty much it, Shan? Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right. Thank you very much for uh, for chiming in. Uh, Irby, did I pronounce that correctly? Irby or V? Either way. Um, please let me know if I mispronounce your name. I'd like to make sure I get it right. Yeah, that is right. Thank you. I'm her mom. Um, so we registered her to third grade in Skipit Elementary just yesterday, and I picked up her Chromebook this morning. Um, I logged into the Chromebook. I set the parent portal and the Schoology accounts. I could not find her teacher assigned yet. And apparently there was a back to school teacher meeting today, uh, which I couldn't find the information to log into. And I'm not sure like how she will attend the school next year. I mean, starting next week because I don't right. have that in yet. All right, who from our panel would like to take a swing at that one? I'll give it a try, Andy. If if you just enrolled recently, it, it might take a, a little bit of time for the school staff to put the schedule into PowerSchool so then it can feed to all of these systems that we're talking about tonight. So just just to be safe, I would give your school a call tomorrow and speak with the registrar and find out where they are in that process. OK, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the question, Laura Powell, Laura. You're next up. Uh, if you would unmute, and we would love to hear your question. All right. Hey, Andy. So hey. my my question is this. So I'm really concerned about the first day of school, and I've got four kids, and they what if they have a problem? They can't log in. They can't do whatever. And so, um, not my, not not so much my elementary school kids, but the middle school kids. So is there like a number to call? Is there a website? Is there something that we can go to immediately to get my kids online when they need to be online? 
We do have resources set up. I, I don't want to make the promise right now that it's going to be uh, an immediate experience because in a county as big as Henrico County with 70 sure. schools and 50,000 students, it's, it's of course. quite possible and reasonable that um, our help desk, which we've been advertising as both a phone number and an email address, is, is going to have quite a lot to do on Tuesday. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't mind me asking, what what school are you affiliated with, or, or it sounds like it's so more I've than got, one I have two, I have my my big kids are at Shorepont Middle, and my little kids are at Knuckles Farm Elementary School. And so, it, it's possible, and maybe this has happened already, that teachers at both schools have reached out to try to do some practice runs that may have occurred either today or or might be scheduled for tomorrow. I don't want to make too many assumptions because I know things can can vary based on some. Uh, you know, uh, various factors. But right. by now, uh, a teacher or teacher should have uh, reached out to introduce themselves, or if not, school principals would be a really good point of contact to handle um, day of troubleshooting. Uh, because in that particular example, the teacher or the principal at a given school is only managing a, a relatively smaller number or relatively smaller segment of our overall community. So I can give you our, our help desk email address, which is helpdesk at henrico.k12.va.us. There's also a phone number that's associated with it. And we have that, both of those on the homepage of our website right now, henricoschools.us. But I, I feel like the one of the best ways to get the fastest amount of help, and people can help right. you no matter what, but of course, we're going to be looking for fast help on Tuesday, and sure. that's going to occur at the school level with the teacher, the principal of the school, or a uh, technology support technician who might be on standby as well. Now, that's a that's an answer that's not in in as much specificity as I'd prefer to, to give because I, I don't feel like I can oh, no. speak specifically for those schools right now. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, just you know, based on experience and knowledge of, of the school system, I, I feel like you're going to have better luck working directly with your teacher or school. For and sure. you might find that tomorrow or, or even any time prior to Tuesday, if you'd just like to practice with a teacher, I, I feel like um, communicating with your teacher or with your school is going to be a good first step in terms of making that happen, just to make sure everybody knows exactly what is going to uh, happen and, and make sure things work prior to Tuesday. I'll uh, just kind of ask my panelists if, if that sounded about right, if there are some other worthwhile ideas worth sharing, or, or maybe that, that covered it. Well, Andy, that's Andy, fabulous, honestly. I'd okay. like to jump in, Andy, real quick. Um, yeah. Coming from the teaching, learning, and innovation department and working directly with our teachers with a lot of this technology is one of the things that we've worked on this week is having conversations with our teachers and leaders around what are their backup plans if some of our major systems go down. So this is a little bit of the opposite end. Let's say that for example, Schoology, because of all the traffic, has some issues. We don't anticipate it um, because they are a big company. But in case of that, what are our teachers planning as a backup? So we know that our teachers and school leaders are thinking through having a prepared backup for in case Schoology goes down or in case Teams isn't working. In that case, we have Google Meet as a backup. Um, and even what if I'm in a, in a meeting as a teacher and my internet goes down, what is my plan? How have I prepared my students? So those conversations are happening this week and will continue to happen so that we have backup plans in case things go down. And that's just um, part of being prepared as possible. Sure. But so as, no as a problem. parent though, should I, should I be worried? You know, because my child's not logged on when when she or he should be. Is is that something you're able to practice prior to Tuesday, or maybe that's the point of asking the, this question? Which no, is, you, and, you... no, I, I absolutely can do. Um, I'm just concerned, like, you know, so what if I'm not able to do this? We cannot do this as a family, and then does my child? Um, I mean, uh, of course, they they will not. You know, I just get concerned yeah. because. I I, I think know, I, I feel what, what if what if I can't do any of these things? Yeah, well, I, I I feel, you know, right right down to my bones that our our teachers are well aware of that level of concern and and the, all of the what ifs uh, associated mm -hmm. with virtual learning, and. Uh, 
I think it's pretty fair to say that our teachers want this to be successful and are doing everything Absolutely. within their considerable powers to make that so. And if there's a bumpy experience on day one, no teachers leaving their kids behind. They'll be reaching out be, uh, via email okay. or whatever contact information they okay. have for you to, to, uh -huh. to, to check up and to follow up and, and to ask. And, and likewise, it's a two-way street. You can do the same thing too. If you've got your teacher's contact information, um, it's sure. certainly appropriate to reach out and say, hey, listen, we had this issue or, or something didn't work the way we expected to. Can I get some help? And, and I, I feel our teachers uh, will move heaven and earth to make this a positive experience oh, for their students and, and their families. And, and so I, I feel, feel really good about that being a, a way to, to make sure no student is um, you know, left behind or has a, a poor experience because I, I think we all want this uh, and are working very hard to make it successful. Thanks, Andy, so much. Really Thank appreciate you very much it. for, no, I appreciate you spending some time with us on a, on a Thursday night. Um, Laura, I think uh, Laura is up next. Does, does that sound about right? Laura Powell. That's me. Hey, Laura, how are you? So, well, I already did that. I was before. You were, I got my, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I. No problem at all. I read my list the wrong way. I was reading right to left instead of left to right. Michael Clark. No worries, Jimmy. Thank you so much. Sorry. Excuse me, we've been waiting, sir. Yes, ma'am. I've got about 100 folks in the room, and I'm working my way down a list of people who uh, signed up, and, and I'm very optimistic that we're going to get there. But I have Michael uh, Clausen next on my list. Michael, if you're still here, we'd love to hear your question. Yes, thank you for taking my question. Uh, I you actually bet. put it in the text too, but the question that I had is a twofold question. One is, are the teachers going to have a different version of Teams or whatever communication software where they just automatically have the kids muted, where we can hope for some better audio quality, where we don't have people stepping on each other? Does it have different kind of rights? Because we see the problems in many of these issues where People just don't go on mute when they need to be on mute. Sure. Uh, one, I, I, one remark in, in that respect is there isn't going to be a class with 120 or, or 200 people in it. So the, the variables are, are minimized, but you still have an extremely valid point. And so uh, I, I think I can bring in Margaret for that. And, and Margaret, it's fair to say that we are uh, educating our teachers, but also our students and families about where to locate the mute button. and. I don't think anyone's pretending that the first day won't be clunky in that respect, whereas we, we all kind of get the hang of it and we, we can share that message all we want, but it really, until you experience the lack of a mute button for the very first time, it's, it's sometimes maybe that argument doesn't resonate as well, but, but then you sit in in a meeting and you realize how um, difficult to hear it can be. And, and that's a really quick and effective way of educating our, our students about the usefulness of the mute button. But I'm not aware, Margaret, of a uh, one size fits all kind of like a hammer that a teacher has that just mutes everyone all at once, unless I'm mistaken. So actually they do. As an organizer, they have um, the ability to uh, click a button or click the three, like you have the three dots in a meeting. If everybody clicks on the participant, the organizer at the very top has the ability to mute all. And so they mute all and then but then the, the students can unmute their line. And then if the teacher needs to, they can, the teacher can go back and remute the line um, if it becomes too disruptive. So yes, to answer your question, as an organizer does have the ability to mute all the lines at one time um, when, she, when he or she's ready to start the class. Thank you for setting me straight, Margaret. I will show myself out now for spreading no. misinformation a moment ago. No, I'm glad I'm glad you're here. Michael, did, did we take care of that or were there other questions on your mind? I, I had a second source and that was, has the system been engineered adequately or stress tested to see how it's going to work on the first day with memory servers, you know, capacity, something like that? Yeah, so, no, that's a so, question we get a lot. So the team, the, the platform that we're using lives in Microsoft's cloud. So it's not something that we host um, locally. 
It lives in Microsoft's cloud, just like Google lives in their cloud. And um, I imagine, I'm hoping that yes, they have, that they yeah. are very, and they are very much aware. Our our vendor partners that 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 I work with are very much aware that our school is starting um, on the eighth. So Microsoft Teams, I think, you know, anything can happen, but. As John said, but I I think I think they'll be able to to handle us. Yes, sir. Super. Thank you very right. much, sure. Michael. Appreciate appreciate your time tonight. I've got Luke Fabiato. Luke, you are next up, and you're welcome to unmute yourself, and uh, we'd love to hear your question. Luke, you still there? I'm going to move on down the list. I have the name Gold. Is that is that right? Gold. I just want to hit the chat button. It. That's what I'm trying to see. Uh, Gold. Is, last name is uh, Abite. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, A B I T E. Yes. Yes, you are. All right. Well, yes. welcome in. What's your question? I think pretty much my question, uh, somebody asked and uh, is being resolved uh, because uh, initially when I log into Clever and go to the Microsoft team icon, he was asking for a code, but somebody said that just log out, you know, reboot it again, and I did it, and when I came back now, it connected fine. Okay. So, so uh, you, you're in a good spot right now, then? You're OK? Yes, I, yes, I am. Uh, Fantastic. Then uh, my second question is, like, uh, on Tuesday, the first day of school, when they just log into the Microsoft team, it just takes them directly to their teacher. When they join the team, does it just take them directly to the to their school room. I, I think this is a good question for John, who can explain the sequence of uh, how one program gets you to the next. And, and if I'm zeroing in correctly, John, this is about how Schoology and the course of a given teacher will get you right to the Microsoft Teams link that allows you to participate in class, correct? Yes, yeah, Andy, that sounds like you're on the right path there. So I'll walk through that in a really generic form and we have full support for each of these steps on the mission forward page that Andy detailed earlier on the virtual learning page that launches from that one. So um, if we were going to just walk through a typical day, we're talking about students on to the, so would, depending on what level they on, they have a, the, the device, the iPad, Chromebook or the Dell laptop. And the first thing that they'll do is they'll go and open Chrome and they'll go to Clever. Clever is that virtual ID badge. It tells the computer which student is logging in and provides access to all the other learning applications with a single sign on. So that's a big time saver for us. Then students from Clever can click the Schoology icon and it automatically logs them into Schoology. And that's their virtual school building with all their virtual classrooms in it. So they'll go to courses and pick one of their courses and they can follow their schedule to know which course to go to. And within that course in Schoology, at the top, we have asked all of our teachers and every school is a little bit different in the placement, but we've asked all of our teachers to put the direct link to the Microsoft Teams virtual class meeting right there inside the course. So that that process is open the device, log in, log in to Clever, log into Schoology, pick your course, and you should have your Teams meeting right there. One other really nice feature about Teams, and the reason that we have the Teams meeting inside the Schoology courses, is that provides that link only to members of that course. So that's really important so that we have the privacy and protection of our students using that link inside that course. And one other point, Andy, just to point out is, the, the meeting link does not become active until the teacher joins the meeting. So if a student goes in early or after a meeting, they'll just be stuck in a waiting room and won't be able to interact with others without supervision. So that's another nice feature of having teams within Schoology. All right. John, thank you very much for, uh, for that explanation. 
I have Desiree next on my list. Desiree, if you are still with us, uh, it's time for you to un unmute, and we'd love to hear your question. Mr. Jinks? That's me. Laura Powell, real quick. Could John please reiterate what he just said? Because I'm taking notes. Sure, sure. John, uh, you want to explain that? No, you're you're fine. This is the whole point. It's to uh, answer questions for one person that other people might find useful as well. So, John, the sequence of events uh, that takes people from uh, logging in for the first time all the way to their Microsoft Teams, why don't you go through that again for, for the note takers out there in our crowd? Yeah, great. I'll, I'll do this again. And so we just kind of uh, make an analogy to the typical school day where a student gets up, travels to school, walks onto campus and, you know, people know who they are, enters classrooms, has class and so on. So in our analogy in the virtual world, a student's going to wake up and the way they get to school is that they log on to their device. The way the school knows who they are is through Clever. They sign into Clever. That's sort of like a virtual ID badge. Then their actual school building in their classrooms, that's Schoology. Schoology has information about all the things that are going on in the school, and it has their individual classrooms. And then when they enter one of those classrooms, they're going to click the Microsoft Teams link in that classroom, which is going to take them to the experience where they're interacting with their teacher and their classmates. Um, and the, the final point we had in there was that that link in Schoology for Microsoft Teams, the way that we have our teachers set it up, that a student cannot interact with other students unsupervised in that meeting link until the teacher has activated it or started that meeting. If any student goes in before or after a meeting has started or ended, uh, they'll be in basically a waiting room until the next day that that class started and the teacher started it. So um, I, we, we feel like that's doing a, a, a really good job of protecting our students um, and not creating spaces that are unsupervised. So hopefully I did a pretty good job of going back over that for the note takers. John, I'd like you to do that again. No, I'm, just, I'm kidding. <laughs> you, you're getting really good at it is my point. I, I, you can, we can just record yourself in the voice memo app. Um, I'm really thank glad we so got much, a chance to way. reiterate that. No, thank you very much for the question. That was that was awesome. Um, that I don't think that was Desiree though. I was calling out Desiree. Um, I, I can't remember now. I'm, I've lost my track, my place a little bit. But Desiree, if you're still here, uh, we'll bring you in to unmute your microphone and go from there. All right, I'm going to move on to uh, Kiris, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, K-I-R-Y-S. And you're welcome to unmute your microphone and we'd love to hear your question. So I know I, I think he's trying to get his his mom. Uh, the question kind of, so I was chatting with with them earlier and the question was kind of covered by um, John Gregory's uh, answer. However, um, oh, is she there? Yes. Okay, so at, go ahead and ask your question. Go ahead, Danny. So I'm having problems trying to log in, and I don't know how to um, like go when um school starts. How, I don't know how like to log in with um, my other classmates while we're doing the um, Zoom. So are you having problems? So I'll ask the question then. I'll ask you the question, and then John will probably need to jump in. Are you having issues actually logging into the Chromebook? Or are you logged into the Chromebook and then that's where you're getting stuck? The Chromebook is where I'm getting stuck. Like you're you're using the Chromebook right now. That's my question. Yes. And so you've joined the Teams meeting from the Chromebook. No, we're using my laptop. He has okay. his Chromebook right here. Okay, so to log in. Okay, so you're logged into the Chromebook. So, John, I'm going to hand this off to you because they're actually logged into the Chromebook. So, what is the next step that he needs to do on the Chromebook to join his class? Yeah, okay, great. I think we can jump right back in, pick it up from logged into the Chromebook and successful. So, that is my transportation to school. The, the device is how I get to my learning. And so, as we talked about a little earlier in the analogy, the next step is 
when I arrive on this virtual campus, I need to show them who I am, and that's where Clever comes in. So if you open up the Chrome browser, that's the typical browser that we use, the one we recommend, because um, it works with most of our systems really well. And uh, depending on which device you have, Clever may automatically open in a tab in that browser. And so all you have to do is go to that tab and click uh, log in with Active Directory. And that is a fancy technical term. Active Directory just means that we have a, uh, a spreadsheet somewhere that lists you know, who people are and what they're associated with. So it, it allows you, since you've already logged into the computer, the computer knows who you are. And so it says, hey, Active Directory, tell them who I am. And that lets you in to Clever. The great thing about Clever is Clever then does the same thing for you with all the rest of our learning applications. So Clever tells all the other programs, hey, I know who this is. They're good to go. They're a Henrico student. Let them in. Let them learn. So from that Clever application, you have all these buttons. It sort of looks like a phone with apps, but it's on your, your computer and in the browser. And if you click on those, it'll open those up. And the one that we mostly use is Schoology. So Schoology is right up near the top. It may even be in a category on your Clever page called Mostly Used. And uh, when you click on that, it's because Clever knows who you are, it's going to let you right into Schoology. Once you're in Schoology, you click Courses. You go find the course that you need to jump in for that time period of the day. And you should have your Microsoft Teams meeting in there to have the live interaction. Schoology will have all your learning materials. Okay, so it's like what they're showing right now on the screen is say courses, groups, resources, and grades, and the teacher's name. Is that the that's the page that we're supposed to be? Yeah, you are there. So I'm excited that you've gotten to that point. That's great. So that's Schoology. And that is our, you know, our virtual building and cl classrooms. And the primary button we're going to hit at the top there is courses. So if you go up and you hit courses at the top, you should see what kind of looks like a um, grid of all the courses. And they'll be listed out there for you. Now, depending on what grade level you're at, they, there could be uh, eight courses. There could be 15. Um, there could be more, possibly. And one of the things that we talked about in one of the earlier sessions is that on, when you click that courses button, on the right hand side is another, another button called my courses. When you click on that, it allows you to reorder the courses. So one of the things that I like to do is I will reorder my courses to match my schedule because those courses are populated in Schoology kind of in a random way because they're following course numbers, not necessarily alphabetical um, arrangement or already understanding your schedule. So you could rearrange those courses in Schoology to help you uh, follow your schedule a little bit better, but you are in the right place. Okay, awesome. You have another question? No. Okay, how do you say? Thank you. Thank you so you much. Are, you're so welcome. That's awesome. Uh, uh, Manazvi, am I pronouncing that correctly? Manazvi. I will uh, move on down the list. Uh, Dakish, is that correct? Is that the right way to pronounce it? You're welcome to unmute your microphone. We'd love to hear your question. Excuse me, why do I raise my hand so that I can comment? We are uh, either raising hands or indicating in the chat function that you would like to ask a question, and, and I'm getting toward the end of my list, so we'd, we'd love to add you. I'm going to move to uh, Vigneshwar. Vigneshwar, am I pronouncing that name correctly? Vigneshwar. Vigneshwar. Excellent. Well, I think, uh, I think we've got you. You're welcome to, to ask your question. How can we help you? Maybe not. Christina Nicola, Christina, if you're with us, we'll take your question. Hi, um, we're hey. just having a question uh, about about Schoology. Um, is the parent supposed to have an account separate from the kids' account? All right, Andy, I'm, I'll take this one. We'll keep rolling here. Okay, good. So we really. We really encourage that our parents do create their own account in Schoology uh -huh. with a different email address than their child, and that when you log into the 
parent power school portal there is a unique code for each of your children that you can copy and when you go back to your schoology account you can connect to your child using that code what that provides for you is the ability to sign in uh, in your own account but to oversee and review all the materials that your child has from their courses and groups. Um, you can see due dates and upcoming assignments. Yeah, um, so that's, that's a really great feature. Okay, but um, I keep signing in on Schoology. I just type in like on Google Schoology uh, Henrico and I choose the parents option and then I sign in and it keeps just not going through. I'm not sure uh, what I'm doing wrong. I even changed the password and again, it wouldn't let me through. So I'm, I'm not sure. Um, if I need to log in from a different, uh, did you say power something? So that sounds like a little bit of a different issue. If you did have success getting in in your parent account, then you can go to the parent power school portal to get a unique code to link your Schoology account with your child's Schoology account. But if we're having trouble getting yeah. into your account first, we want to yeah. take care of that. So what, what, what would I'll do is I'll put my email address in the chat. Okay. And you can send me an email and we can look at it. It's possible that we are going to um, the incorrect URL for Henrico and Schoology or that um, just something's kind of getting jammed up somewhere. So it's probably cool. best that, that you just send me an email directly and we'll see if we can fix it. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. In each of these sessions, I've been able to plug the Schoology app, which I really like for uh, as being the parent of elementary school kids. So I, I would just quickly recommend uh, a parent account for Schoology, I, I think those of you who set one up will, will find that you like it very much. So uh, I, I'm watching the clock and we've got several names on my list. We're going to get to all of them. But d at this point, we're past the hour mark and generally these sessions have gone about 90 minutes. So the names that are still on my list are John, Emma, Chelsea, Crystal. And I'm going to get to all four of you. And then I'm going to keep my eye on the clock just to see if we can squeeze in a few additional folks before we kind of come to the the end of our time together. John Rector, if you are still here, John, we would love to hear what your question is. Yeah, I had a question, but y'all pretty much covered it just now with the uh, differences of power school and Schoology. While I'm listening to y'all, I was able to find the access code for. Uh, awesome. Uh, that's that's but, great. But, that's uh, I'm logging into that now. That's why I took my hand down. But I appreciate all this information, guys. I really do. No, I'm, I'm glad you stuck around to let us know that. I appreciate that very much. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Emma, Emma, you're up next. If you're still with us, Emma, you can unmute your microphone. We'd love to hear your question. Emma, you happen to be there? Chelsea Cross. Chelsea, I'm going to move to you. If you are still in the meeting, we uh, would love for you to unmute your microphone and, and listen to your question. Um, so how do you join like the Zoom calls for like school? And uh, I think we can answer that one pretty easily. John, this is where we talk about how um, Clever gets you to Schoology, which gets you to Microsoft Teams. We actually use this platform that you're on right now, Microsoft Teams, not Zoom, which is another video conferencing program, of course. But uh, John, I'll, I'll tee you up one more time about going from one uh, from one portal or, or one platform to the next. Yeah, thanks, Andy. And like Zoom has sort of become the generic term and for a lot of us for a, a video meeting. So I totally understand the use of that. But to your point, we are using the application Microsoft Teams for all our virtual classes. Um, and so um, that's just something that takes a little time to get used to that term, but we understand what you're asking about. So we did go through that analogy several times, but we'll just get to the tail end of it. Once you're in Schoology as a student, you have courses, and when you click on any one of those courses, it opens you up into a window that has materials, updates, um, there's a calendar and, and upcoming assignments and uh, events. But right at the top, we've been working with our teachers, and every school is going to be a little different, but we're going to have that link to the Microsoft Teams virtual class right at the top and very obvious. Typically, it's highlighted or bolded, and that's something that you can click directly on right from that Schoology course to open up that Teams meeting. Now, remember, we talked about this a little early. If you click on it before class, 
and your teacher isn't in there waiting for you, you'll be in a waiting room. And then when your teacher joins, it'll activate for you. If you click on an after class and the teacher's not there, you again will be in a waiting room and um, it wouldn't open up until the next time you met with that teacher. So um, by having those links inside the Schoology course, we're only giving them out to the students who are assigned to that course. And by having that feature on, we're limiting the time that that meeting happens to when the teacher is in the space. John, thank you very much. Uh, Crystal is Isaac's mom, and I know that because I've been looking at uh, your name here on my grid for a while. How are you, Crystal? Welcome in. What's your question? I'm well, thank you. Can you hear me? Can you hear you loud and clear. Okay. Um, so I've been trying to log into PowerSchool, and every time I log in, it's telling me that my student's information is invalid, but it's the information that the school gave me, and he's like starting kindergarten, so all his stuff's new. How would I go about signing into PowerSchool? Uh, that, it's time to bring Melanie back into the program. I think Melanie can help you out with that. Absolutely. So your school gave you your child's student number? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, sometimes what happens is it gets really tricky to put the your child's initials in the right way and your their child's date of birth in the right order. So things get a little um, confused and people are having difficulty getting their account created. So if you want to, I will put my email address in the chat and um, if you could email me your student's name and the birth date, I'll reach out to you after this uh, webinar is over and I'll help you get that set up and get everything going for you, okay? Okay, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for waiting on us. All right. Akia, I, I think I've seen and, and heard uh, your name throughout the uh, program. If you're still there, uh, we would love for you to unmute your microphone and what's your question? Yes, my question is, um, we are into um, all of these programs, but I cannot log my daughter into any of those programs. She doesn't even have a homeroom teacher or anything or a schedule. Okay. And I need access to how I get that. So where's the problem beginning? You, you're, you're logged into your device or not even that far yet? I'm, I'm actually logged in. We have... Um, we were able to log in with her old um, path, username and password from last year at Montrose Elementary. Here we start a new year at uh, John Roth Middle School. So she's going to be in the sixth grade this year. Nobody reached out to me yet to tell me wh who's her teacher, what's her um, classes or anything. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry to hear that. That's unfortunate. I feel like that should have happened by now. And uh, it feels like you're doing everything you're supposed to, but I, I do have one question. Uh, has any of your contact information changed in the past year by chance? No, sir. Um, okay. I actually called um, the school and updated my email address because they had one letter missing out of my old email address. And okay. I'm getting emails now, um, and it okay. said I had an um, email saying that it was updated, and I got all of the other emails, but no one okay. has reached out to me. Hmm. I don't know that our panelists are going to be able to address it. it. It sounds like this might be better resolved at the school, and even as I say that, I feel like you've already made, taken steps to try and do that, which is why you're, you're here tonight. Um, is there any uh, sense in, in recommending that you, you contact the school or the, or the principal there, uh, Mrs. George, about trying to get in touch with your child's teacher? Okay, I will. That, I, I feel like that would be the most direct way. I don't want to make guarantees because I'm not sure what people's schedules are tomorrow, but if there's a parent out there who hasn't heard from their child's teacher by now, I think any principal that I know would want to rectify that situation. Mrs. George is the principal at Rolf Middle School. Um, and if you're able to find a phone number or an email address for her, I feel like she'd be the one to most effectively put you in touch with your child's teacher. Okay. And okay. Andy, I would also I would also like to recommend um, creating a parent portal account 
that way you can log in and see your child's schedule and get all the student account access information for all the different devices and things you'll be logging into. So I put my my number or my email in the chat. It's magerman at henrico.k12.va.us and I'll be happy to assist you with that if you want to email me. And that's the thing. That's why I had to cut in because I don't see a chat on here. I just went through everything mm. and I don't okay. have a on my device at all. Do you have right. a, a piece of paper in front of you? I can give it to you real slow. Yes. Okay. M A German, G E R M A N, all one word, at henrico.k12.va.us. You just give me an email and I'll help you set up that account. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Akia, we'll get you all squared away. Appreciate you waiting on us. I've got. About Thank five you. names that we're going to try to do expeditiously because I'm, I'm watching the clock and, and about 7.30 is, is when I think our time together comes to an end. Abdul Zahir, Lorenzo, AC, Sierra, Maxine, those are the names in front of me. I'll, I'll start with Abdul Zahir. Are you still with us? And if so, we'd love to hear your question. Hello, do you say AC? Uh, that's one of the names. I'm, that's the third one on my list. But tell you what, I hear you now. You have my attention. Why don't we go to you right away? Uh, AC, uh, I'm you're sorry. Up. You're, you're up. Go right ahead. All right. I, well, I just have a quick question because I've been trying to sign to Schoology, and I thought that I had the wrong password and everything. And so um, I used. I didn't know which email I used, and I, I was able to sign in and try to get to the page. Um, and I did select my email, and then I put the code that sends to my phone to send out. Because I did go through Henrico Schoology, like they said, you should be going through, I guess. Yeah. But then I get an error message that keeps saying, um, could not validate authentication state. So I'm, like, having trouble getting on. Because I, I know I, my account was linked before with my daughter, the account where I used to get it on my other phone. Now I can't, I'm having trouble. What do our panelists think of that uh, situation? So it sounds like in this case, Andy, we're talking about the creation or uh, finding an existing Schoology pa parent account. Um, and so if we've gone through some of the basic troubleshooting and there's not a way to reset the password that's obvious for you, um, let's go the route of or I'll provide my email address again in the chat and we can see if we can specifically identify something. Now, I will say on the Henrico schools.us website, that's the main website for the division, there's the mission forward page that Andy's talked about earlier in this chat and other chats. On that mission forward page, there is a blue link that says virtual learning. And I know this sounds like a bunch of breadcrumbs, but it'll get you right to where you need to go. And on that page, there are specific instructions all about the different resources we've been talking about today. And Schoology being one of those, there is a complete Schoology course and a one page quick guide for parents. There's a possibility that an answer is on there. And so if you would take a look at that, I will go ahead and the direct link in the chat to that section. And then I'll also put my email if we can't find an answer in those resources and we'll try to help you out. Okay, I can't see the chat where I'm try I'm trying to find where that chat is that you're talking about so I can see the, your email address you're talking about. I can't Sure, find so we, we're still learning a little bit about when we have guests join us in Teams, but um, it's my understanding that if you see an icon that looks something like a little uh, text bubble, it would be kind of a rectangle with some lines, and you yeah. click on that, that would open the chat. It would be near where you would mute your microphone or the camera, so take a look there. There's also the three dots, and three dots is kind of a technology symbol for there's more stuff here, so click there and you may be able to find the chat as well. Okay, I'm not showing anything. All right, John, just shout out that email address. All right, so I'll uh, give you the first part of my email address, which is J D G R E G O R I. My last name is Gregory. It is like Gregory, but with an I on the end instead of the Y. So J D Gregory. And then all of our emails end with at henrico.k12.va.us. 
Thank you. All right, we will get you squared away. Lorenzo, you're on my list. If you're still with us, Lorenzo, we'd love to hear your question. You can unmute your microphone. That I have the same question. I'm able to log in via Clever to um, PowerSchool, but I'm unable to log into Schoology. It's saying it could not validate authentication state. John, is that the same? Uh, do we do we explain it here, or is this another maybe email address type of uh, offline assistance? Yeah, it's definitely possible. I think when when we see things like this, um, you know, there's a series of routine troubleshooting steps that we go, and it's almost like uh, if any of you have ever called the cable company and they say, did you unplug the device? And it sounds ridiculous, but it definitely works sometimes. So I would say in general, if we're seeing something like that, like one would be to try or restart. If the device okay. hasn't been on a Henrico network, you know, going by a school and restarting several times. Uh, Margaret has kind of talked about this. Our systems were never designed for our, these devices to be away from the schools for so long. They actually work really well when they're constantly updated at the school. So that's an option. Um, clearing the browsing history and the cache. These are all kind of like sort of generic troubleshootings when we see some things like, oh, I can't quite connect or I can't quite authenticate. Those may not solve the problem, but oftentimes they do. So we would give a shot at those, and then if there's a continued problems, um, you certainly feel free to reach out to me via email, and I'll put that in the chat or, or speak it again. Um, and then, of course, we have the, the help desk hubs if we're really running into issues that you're unable to really use the device for learning. So I'm, I need to ask Lorenzo a question. Is it a Chromebook or is it a Windows machine, a Windows laptop? Uh, Windows. So it is a Windows laptop. Most definitely, as John said, visit a school ground and go through the um, the Google. I'll post it in there again. The Google Doc about back to school. A shutdown is the best thing you can do on a Windows laptop when you start having problems. Okay. Not just a restart, but a complete shutdown. Don't hit the power button. You go mm -hmm. to the start menu and you yeah. say power shut down and just let it shut down. If it takes three minutes, it takes three minutes, especially on school grounds. It just you're just going to have to. They've been away for so long. They have to do lots of checking in and refreshing the policies and getting reacquainted with everything. So definitely, definitely shut it down and start again. So when I go when to the school ground, uh, I just log into the or um, to the white to their Wi-Fi. Is that what? Yeah, you're going to connect. Yes, you're going to connect to the HPS network. That's going to be the first thing you do. And I'm I'm putting the the document in the chat again. Follow the document that's there, and that will help. Um, it might help with some of these issues. I can't speak to the Schoology stuff, but definitely shutting down on the school network, working through that process. Clearing your cache and cookies a lot of times on a browser fixes a whole lot of stuff too. But first thing, shut it down. Okay. So start, log into it, and we'll go through this process that, that's there if you have not already. Okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. You're speaking, welcome. Speaking of shutting it down, I had a whole lot of daylight when we started at six o'clock, and now it's getting dark outside this uh, window right in front of me. I have two names. Sierra and Maxine, let's see if we can squeeze them both in. Sierra, if you are still with us, we'd love to hear your question. Sierra, are you still with us? All right, I'm going to move on to Maxine. Maxine, do you have a question for us? You can unmute your microphone and we'd love to hear it. Um, yes, I think I may have to go to the hub though, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm having a hard time signing into my daughter's Chromebook. Like it worked the first day that we got it. Um, but then when we went to do the orientation this morning, it keeps saying, um, asking me for her email address and then it asked for a password and I put in her password and it doesn't work. And then it takes me to the internet connection. Huh, I was muted. Sorry. So Maxine, my recommendation right now would be to sign out of the Chromebook and then on the login screen where your daughter's uh, username is, you click the down arrow and 
remove um, the profile and then and then log in again. OK, so then, when I hit the shutdown, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I just want to make when I hit the shutdown button, uh -huh. it, when I go back on, it brings me right back to this Google sign on to your Chromebook white box. Like it's not completely shutting down to get me to that. I know what you're referring to, like that section in the middle where it says yeah, change yeah. username. It doesn't right. allow me to go to that point. So on that on that screen there, click the, the there should be a blue link that says sign in with a different account or something like that. Okay. If you click on that link, it will bring up the um, the login screen to get you started. OK, I'll try it again and see if it works. If not, then I guess I have to take it in tomorrow. They're open tomorrow between 830 and 4. Yes, ma'am. OK, yes, ma'am. All right. All right. Thank you. That was my question. OK, thank you very much for, for asking that question. I have one since we skipped over a name. Uh, I, Maria Jackson, I saw you waving at the lens, and I didn't know if that meant you had a question or not. Uh, I figured since I skipped over somebody else, I, I still had time for one more question. Did I interpret it that correctly? Is there something we can do for you, uh, for you, Maria? Yes, I just have a quick question. Good evening, sure. everyone. Um, yes, so when when my child is at home on their Chromebook, that he will obviously be connected to the internet at my home and so he's going to be going to daycare starting on september 8th will that automatically go to like he's going to be going to i'm um, actually um glenn allen high school with mm -hmm. the ymca so will that automatically shift over to their internet yeah. he, he'll he'll need to if it doesn't automatically shift to hbs wireless he could just select it down at the bottom um to the in the right hand corner and select it, okay. but it should it should automatically connect. Yes, ma'am. OK, well, thank you. This has been so much information. It's been great information. Thank you so much. We, well, we, okay. Maria, Maria, we figured we would rather do this than send everyone another thousand word email. You know, sometimes it's just better to talk it out for a little while. And I'm glad we really uh, have. I'm glad we, we were able to spend this time together. So to, to recap, if we didn't get to your question, I'm, I'm so sorry about that, but at, we now have approximately four and a half hours worth of discussion that we've done today between our 10 o'clock, our 2 o'clock, and, and our 6 o'clock session. So please go back if you have that kind of time or just want to see what else was discussed. You can go to henricoschools.us slash return to school. Again, that's henricoschools.us slash return to school. And you'll find the box for help chats and you'll see all of our earlier videos plus the two sessions from today. Uh, by tomorrow morning, this one will be uploaded and on there as well. And we encourage you to tell your friends some things you learned or just have them refer to some of the videos if they're stuck in, in a way that we might be able to help. So with that in mind, I want to say thanks to our, our panelists who have been with me uh, all day. Uh, John, uh, Margaret, Melanie, thank you very much for, for you guys being here. And there are many folks behind the scenes with the uh, communications and community engagement team who need to be shouted out as well. So uh, Sean, Courtney, Chris, Kevin, a bunch of uh, folks who have been with us through, throughout the day have been uh, tremendous. I, I think Kelly was involved in this for a portion of the afternoon, too, if I'm not mistaken. But I've, I've left my notes behind me, so I'm, I'm probably forgetting someone important who, um, Hello. who, who helped Hello. us out tremendously. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Um, you've called us twice, thrice, and we missed uh, a mute well, button. Hey. I, I was wrapping it up, but we haven't wrapped up yet. So go ahead, fire away. Thank you. I have um, three kids coming from a private school and they are on the one subject plan. I was just wondering how, um, how do you, how does this work? Because I see their schedule and it's all cramped up in a week. And if you have after school class um, assistance or something. Can you repeat that question? I'm going to try and try and get you pointing in the right direction. One more time for me. OK, I have kids coming from private school and they have one subject plan. They were on the one subject. So I don't know how they going to um, work with the schedule. And if they need help, is there some kind of an assistance for them? 
Because they do one class, one subject for like nine weeks, right? Seven, Seven weeks. And we then another will subject. Absolutely. We will encourage you to make contact with your school, either your principal or your student's teacher. And if that kind of contact uh, hasn't happened yet, that, that's unfortunate. I feel like it should have happened by now. But I would encourage you for uh, with this kind of situation to reach out to your school principal uh, directly. What, what school are we talking about in this situation? Um, deep Run. Deep Run. No. Dr. Fellows is the principal there. Dr. Brian no. Fellows. Uh, super guy, longtime principal in this organization, and I think Dr. Fellows will get you squared away really quickly. I, I would recommend if you want to remember just one name, the principal there is uh, Dr. Fellows, and he'll be able to help okay. you out. Okay, thank you so hey, much. Hey, everyone. I appreciate everyone's time together. I really enjoyed hello, this. I hello. hope you did too. And uh, hello, I, I'm hello. afraid it's all right, I'm, I'm going to hang on the line. I, I, I'll let the rest of our audience off the hook if, if folks have other things to do on a 730, but I'm going to have to make this the last question. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi. I'm Harriet. I'm calling on behalf of my daughter, Clarice. Mm -hmm. I'm finding it so difficult to light the tablet because there is no app uh, on the tablet saying that Lock in, uh, lock in, or no outcome at all on the tablet, uh, on the iPad. So logging into the iPad is the question right now. Yes. All right, Andy, I'll, I'll try to take this one. Um, okay. I know Margaret um, typically talks about our iPad or about logging in, and in, in this case. The iPads don't have the traditional login just to gain access. You actually just hit the home button or, or turn the iPad on. And that takes you to the normal kind of app screen. And then once you're on, we're going to ask students to log into several things. So they would go to the browser, Safari browser, and they could log into Clever and Schoology through the browser. And Andy sort of hinted at this at the beginning of our conversation today about, especially on our iPads, some things work really well in the browser whilst other things work better in the apps. So in this case, let's take that analogy we've been using the whole afternoon and say to get to school, you turn on the iPad. Um, to show people who you are, you open the browser and you log into Clever. And that on the iPad is something that you have to type in the URL the first time, and then you can bookmark it. So um, the instructions are on the virtual learning page step by step. And then we would open another tab in that browser and go to Schoology, or we could go to Schoology from Clever. Um, the exception to using the browser on the iPad is Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams in the browser isn't really powerful enough to handle all these video streams, so we recommend using the app, and that's something that you would also sign in, so you would open the app and sign in. Um, that's one of the few occasions where we have we have to ask students to sign in multiple times on a device because the app and the browser work a little bit differently. But hopefully that'll get you started, and I would really recommend um, beyond the, the scope of this call and the ability for us to give you push button instructions on the Henrico County site, on the Mission Forward page on that site, there is a virtual learning link that takes you to really detailed instructions for all of our devices and actually says which device do you have. You click on the iPad and you'll get step by step step instructions. There are five critical steps um, that really will help you be successful in using that device by the first day of school. All right, John. Thanks very much. Again, All to our right. panel and members of the communications team, Kelly and Jeff as well, who's been hanging out with us all day. Uh, I really appreciate and enjoyed this time together. Uh, we, we thank you so much for spending part of your Thursday evening with us, and we look forward to a tremendous start to a our predominantly virtual learning for nine weeks, which begins on Tuesday, September 8th. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care.